Nangamalari. <laughs> My microphone's fallen, but hopefully it will stay with me. Nangamalari Amba, Nangamalari Uran, Nangamalari Gadigal Iora Buru. Hello, everybody. I said hello to you in my language, Bardi, and I acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet and acknowledge traditional Aboriginal traditional owners, Torres Strait Islander owners uh, everywhere. We say Nangamanladi Amburuni Buru everywhere across Australia. So, thanks for having me here today. I want to preface my talk by suggesting a recipe for happiness. I think for me there are five central needs, if you like, or ingredients, um, but there may be more for others, but the ones that I identify as being important are, it's important to know who you are. It's important to know your life's purpose. We all have a need to feel connected to one another, and we all have a need to belong and to feel loved and cared for. So, for me, that recipe um, is what Dreamtime provides, and that's what I want to share with you today. So, um, nothing stirs the imagination more than the Aboriginal Dreamtime. Everyone wants to know what it is. Its very name is enticing. Wherever I go, people often ask, Auntie, what is Dreamtime? Asking an Aboriginal pe person to explain what Dreamtime is, is like asking someone to explain Christianity, Buddhism, or Juda Judaism. It's no easy task. Like many of the world's religions, it can take a lifetime to learn. Or as one elder put it, Gadia asks all the time, what is Dreamtime? There we go. Um, this is hard to answer because dreaming is a really big thing for Aboriginal people. And it is a really big thing. Dreamtime describes the religion or spirituality of Aboriginal Australians. It is a philosophy, a cosmology, a religion, a world view, and a way of life that explains how the world was created and our relationship to it and each other. I love the word dream time. For me, it conjures up a magical and mysterious world. It aligns perfectly in many world, with a common idea in many world religions that God is unknowable beyond words or human understanding. This is why Wanjana are painted with no mouths. It is, Wanjana is beyond our understanding. Or as I heard one elder say, not all that is unknown is for our understanding. In other words, it's not about the destination, but the journey. We don't always have to know where we're going. I know people worry about that all the time, but we just have to trust and go with the flow. Or as a wise woman, Auntie Miriam Rose, says, we cannot hurry the river. We have to move with the current and understand its ways. And the way that we do it is to immerse ourselves in nature and just sit and contemplate. Auntie Miriam offers an indigenous meditative practice called dadiri, or deep listening. And all of the indigenous nations across Australia have their own version of Dadidi. It's just called by different names. People often confuse dream time with ordinary dreaming and sleep. But while dreams are part of dream time, it is by no means limited to this. Rather, it's an expansive consciousness that deals with larger issues such as the meaning of life and everything in between. Another question I'm asked is, Auntie, what does it mean to have kangaroo, possum, or some other dreaming? Well, dreaming is all about helping people spiritually. It teaches us how to cope with life, 
by identifying the issues and challenges we need to face. By learning from our dreaming or our totem, we develop a strong sense of self and well-being so that we can better contribute to society. Essentially, our dreaming helps guide us through life. It helps identify those things you need to master to know who you are on life's journey. Through this process of self-discovery, people become aware of their calling or vocation in life. Ultimately, this means you know who and what you are in terms of a symbol. So my question to you is, do you know what your symbol or dreaming is? Now, some of you may already know what that is, or perhaps you've never contemplated it before. If that's the case, then let me ask you this. If I say the words to you, red sack, red sack, what comes to mind? Does anyone want to offer anything? What comes to your mind when you think about red sack? Spider. Spider, Spider yep. Anything else? Turkey, yeah. Handbag. Handbag. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Sorry? Santa. Yeah. Santa, yes. A call. A call like a centre. Oh, yes, a call like a centre. Fan fantastic. I'll come back to this about red sack in a moment. Um, but for me, my symbols, my family dreaming is Nimanbor, the fruit bat, while my personal dreaming is Arlen, the white-chested sea eagle. So what do they teach me? Well, my family's bat totem enables me to see things from a new perspective, especially from an upside-down point of view. Whenever I want to look at an issue in a new light, I literally hang upside-down like a bat, and I can easily see new solutions and possibilities that I am otherwise unable to. Bat dreaming also teaches me about self-care and self-protection in the way that bats envelop themselves in their bat wings. Their heightened sense of sonic hearing teaches me to go beyond the limitations of human hearing, to attune myself to unseen worlds and unsaid words, to listen deeply. I do this through indigenous practices like Dadiri by using what I call dreaming ears. My personal symbol or dreaming is Arlen, the white-chested sea eagle. Eagles fly high in the sky so they can see far and wide. And because they can see the lay of the land, they can see the bigger picture. But when you, know, when you need to hone in on the finer details, they can do that too. Everyone and everything have dreaming, as strange as that may sound. Crows have dreaming. Barramundi have dreaming. Clouds have dreaming. To say that everyone and everything has dreaming is to say that everything is consciousness. When people talk about dream time, they often mistakenly do so as a relic of the past. But this frozen view ignores the dynamic nature where the past, present and future are one. In the Aboriginal worldview, time is not linear, but a circle symbolised by the dot. Western science has only recently come to this realisation, largely through the work of quantum physics. Beyond the circular nature of time, the dot reveals a deeper psychological understanding of ourselves, which is why it features so prominently in, our, in Aboriginal art. The circle, or dot, contains everything. It is the still place where duality or opposites are reconciled, above and below, light and shade, male and female. To Indigenous people, it is all this and more. 
The circle is a sacred symbol reminding us of the importance of our unique place in the universe and our relation with all things. The more that we are able to understand the circle of life and our place within it, the more we are able to understand ourselves, our purpose, our responsibilities and our medicine. Medicine, like dreaming, refers to the spiritual essence within all things that can not only help you discover your life's purpose, but to help you live a good, happy life. Dreamtime teaches that you are not alone in this world, that you are more connected than you realise, that you are related to every living being, animal, plant and object, that you are family and that you belong. How incredibly empowering this realisation is to the embattled, the dispossessed, and those who are lost and have lost hope. This is why my mentor and spiritual teacher would often remind me, Manya, dream time is not just for Aboriginal people, it's for everyone. One of the greatest realisations of dream time is that country is family and that we are all connected and interrelated with one another and with all the plants, the trees, the birds and the stars and everything in our multiverse. We are connected through song lines, the energy lines that crisscross Australia. Together they form a net that holds everything. In the Kimberley we call this net the Wunan. This safety net holds and keeps us strong together. Within this net, we are not lost, we are not alone, we belong. It's important to build a relationship with country and to commune with it. We believe the land speaks to us. We are taught from a tender age how to do this. Just as we communicate with each other, we are taught the importance of listening with our heart, mind and soul. To move with the current of the land and understand its ways, as Auntie Miriam says, is to enter the dream time, to connect with its rhythms and move at a different pace, especially in our modern, hectic lifestyle. To understand it is to step outside and leave your ego behind because it is not all about you. It's all about learning your place in the world, to see beauty in everything around you and to cultivate acceptance that the world moves at its own pace. For me, it is about our common heritage and destiny, our connection, our kindredness and our oneness with all of nature. The truth is that we are more connected than we realise. We are not alone in this world, but part of one big family. I said earlier it's important to immerse oneself in nature, which is why it's important to visit country, especially sacred sites. Why sacred sites? Because that's where the ancestral earth energies are highly concentrated, so they are effectively places of power and as such are in themselves empowering. I love languages and anyone who knows me knows that I love a play of words. Sacred sites, sight, S-I-T-E, can also refer to things that we see as in our sight. And when a sacred site then becomes um, becomes uh, our, our, our insight, if you like, when you're positioned at, and when you're located somewhere, which is, in turn, our insight. So that's why um, sacred sites are important to visit, because they're places of huge personal or divine revelation, which is why people seek them out. Anyone who has ever visited a sacred site intuitively understands this. Sacred sites are the locus 
and sacred sites become the opus. In other words, spiritual insight is gained not only through what we can see, but what we can visit and touch. The quickest way to touch the divine is to spend time in nature and immerse yourself in places of power where the Earth's energies are most concentrated. If you do, you open yourself to epiphany like Carl Jung, who had this spiritual experience. And he said, I am sitting on this stone and it is underneath. Am I the one who is sitting on the stone or am I the stone on which he is sitting? Quite clearly to me, Carl Jung is describing a dreaming experience, a dreamtime experience. I want to return to the question I asked at the beginning of my talk when I asked what comes to mind when you think of a red sack. As you probably guess by now, I'm a huge fan of wordplay to illustrate spiritual concepts. When you reverse red sack, you get sacred, absolutely, sack red or sacred. So whatever you're thought of as your red sack is the key to your sacredness. It will point the way, whether it is what you thought of as the heart or a handbag or Santa's Christmas bag or as one man suggested one time, testicles. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's the suggestion that a symbol is so much more and that meaning is personal to you. When I look at the word red sack, for example, I see several things that tell me how special it is. The first thing I see is the colour red, as celebrated in our red ochre, which is the primary colour of Aboriginal law business. Or Uluru, which is a very important red sack or sacred site. More importantly, red symbolises blood, the life force, which is why it is sacred. And within the sacred, I see the words scar and scarred. Scars speak to initiation, and to be scared is to be in awe of something much more powerful than ourselves. So being scarred is another way of saying you're scared, which is about having respect for something greater than us. Acknowledging sacredness in all its forms is about respecting a higher power. Red sack is also code for the way of the heart, which is all about love. Aboriginal culture and spirituality have much to offer humanity. Dreamtime is ultimately an ethics code that teaches respect for all things and being mindful of the consequences of our actions and behaviour on those we share the planet with, the creatures, the rocks, the rivers, trees and mountains. And if I can leave you with just one thought for today, it is this. As you move through this world, just remember that so-called drunk or drug addict or homeless person on the street may be a wise sage, and that kangaroo, possum or tree may be an elder, teacher, mother, father, brother, sister, son or daughter. And as with any family or tribe, there is a deep, abiding sense of community. This kindredness that Indigenous people feel towards their fellow creatures and their environment is a beautiful thing to be cherished. As I mentioned, my teacher would often say to me, Dreamtime is for everyone. It's for you. Dreamtime brings us a sense of knowing who we are and our life's purpose, of feeling connected to everyone and everything, of feeling that we belong and that we are loved and cared for. It is, in effect, a recipe for happiness. I invite you to learn about 
what that gift is by purchasing a copy of our books, Journey into Dreamtime and Practical Reconciliation that we have available out in the foyer to embark on your own journey. Nangamaladi. <laughs>